Today's gospel is from John's 15th chapter, and this is during Jesus' Last Supper, his farewell speech, in fact, to the disciples. So during this final meal with his disciples, Jesus teaches them an important lesson to remain connected to him through it all. Using this imagery of the grapevine, Jesus teaches them and teaches us, disciples of his in 2015 here at St. Andrew Parish, he teaches us three important lessons, three important lessons. First, we need to stay connected to Jesus. Like branches that are connected to the grapevine and receive a life from that vine, we too must stay connected to Jesus if we are to bear fruit in our lives. First lesson, stay connected to Jesus. The second lesson is that pruning, pruning, is good for us. As branches on a grapevine, we need to be pruned so we can bear more fruit. Pruning, in fact, is our in, in our best interests. So we shouldn't shy away from this process of being pruned. We should allow God, who is the vine grower, to prune us, to take care of us in this way. The third lesson that we learn from this image of Jesus as the vine and we the branches teaches us that God is pleased, God is happy when we stay connected to Jesus, his son, the vine, and allow ourselves to be pruned. So God is very pleased when we allow this to happen. So let's look at these three lessons in a little bit more detail. First lesson, staying connected and close to Jesus if we want to bear fruit in our lives. In this vine metaphor, Jesus asks us to abide in him as he abides in us. Christ uses this vivid imagery when he calls himself the vine and we the branches. So if we are to thrive and to bear fruit in our lives, we must stay connected to Jesus who is the vine. Jesus goes so far to say that whoever does not abide in him will be thrown away like a branch, branch that withers and dies. He says that apart from him we can do nothing, absolutely nothing. Not a little bit, we're not going to bear little fruits or deformed fruits. He says nothing. I think this is worth keeping in mind, it's an important point. So if you and I want to bear fruit in our lives, Jesus is saying you must be connected to him who is the vine. So what does this connected mean? It means that we have to have a living relationship with Jesus Christ. And not just one that's active for an hour a week on Sunday mornings, but something that is alive and thriving each and every day. To abide in Jesus is to have that living relationship with Jesus, to be fed and nourished each and every day by him. And in a practical way, this means daily prayer with God. Even for just a few minutes in the morning, a few minutes in the evening, some sort of prayer that connects us to Jesus the vine. In addition, that means spending a little time with Scripture, maybe a simple verse, one phrase. It doesn't have to be chapters and chapters in the Bible. Sometimes just one phrase is so powerful that it will nourish us for a whole day, maybe even for a week. And I'm not making this up. This is, I'm just pulling out ideas from today's gospel, from today's readings, because this is the core message that you and I need to be reminded of to identify this so that it doesn't just come and go without us noticing what is the core message. And that message is if we try to live our lives absent of God, absent of God, we will become like that branch that withers and dies that Jesus referred to. Jesus wants us to abide in him the way he abides in us. So let us allow him to do that work in us by staying connected to him in our lives. The second lesson, lesson was pruning is good for us. Pruning is good for us. So as I think a lot of us will begin buying flowers and maybe setting up the garden there, especially with this beautiful weather, we know the importance of pruning plants to help them grow. When a grapevine is pruned by the vine grower, the purpose is to clip off those leaves or branches that are not bearing fruit. In fact, so that the sap from the vine can go to those branches that are bearing fruit. And this process of pruning focuses the nutrients to go to those branches that are already bearing fruit so that they can be more productive, to bear more fruit. Similarly, you and I, as these branches that are attached to Jesus, the true vine, we too must be pruned to remove those parts of our lives, maybe parts of our character, maybe bad habits, that prevent us from being fruitful in our life. Could be things that are destructive in our life, distracting in our life, things that prevent us from bearing fruit, maybe those bad habits of procrastination, laziness, pride, jealousy, gossip, envy of others, 
using crude language, lust, or our attachments to material possessions. All these things must be pruned away if we are to live up to the potential that God has made us for, if we are to bear the fruit that we have been called to in this life. We shouldn't be afraid of letting God prune these things away or pruning them away ourselves. It's ultimately for our own good, and it'll be for our good in this life and the next. The third lesson, we please God when we stay connected to his son Jesus and allow ourselves to be pruned. This third lesson, I hope, brings us great joy, great consolation, because our lives are meant to bring God happiness and joy. Our lives are meant to be like a love song that responds to Jesus, that responds to God's great gifts in our lives. I think of, obviously, the gift of life, the gift of sending his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, two tremendous gifts that we've received in our life, just to name a few. So these gifts demand a response in our lives. And how do we respond to these gifts as a sign of God's love for us? And that is, we become disciples of Jesus, followers of Jesus, his son. And as disciples, we learn to love the teachings and commandments that God has given to us through his son, Jesus. Jesus has given us the parameters to live our life that God the Father, his Father, our Creator, has destined for us. Therefore, connecting ourselves to Jesus, the true vine, means following the example that the Son of God laid out for us. It involves conforming our lives to live up to that gold standard that Jesus set for us, that he modeled for us, based on loving God and loving our neighbor. If we follow Jesus in this gold standard in our lives, we, in fact, give glory to God. That was the last phrase in today's gospel. We give glory to God. What does that mean? That means we return his love. We give glory to God. We return his love and thus make him very happy. And how amazing is that, that us, the creatures, can make God the creator happy. My friends, let us never forget to stay connected to Jesus each and every day. Let us allow ourselves to be pruned of anything that is not of God, that prevents us from bearing good fruit in our lives. And as disciples of Jesus, let us give glory to God. Let us make him happy by, in fact, becoming disciples of Jesus, following his teachings, his commandments, to love God, to love our neighbor with all our heart, all our mind, all our strength, and all our soul. May God bless you.